So today I'm here at uh, my Uncle Mel's shop and I just wanted to showcase some of his rigs. He does a lot of cool swaps. He's done some, oh, uh, F100 trucks on Crown Vic chassis. And uh, really he just likes to do swaps to make stuff drivable. Definitely not into, you know, building show cars and stuff that you got a trailer around, just making stuff super drivable fun to have out on the street, handle well, stop well, and be reliable for cross-country trips and stuff. Yeah. So he splits his time between here and Canby, or Canby here, and uh, Wyoming, and he's getting ready to go back there. So I sprung on him real quick, getting to come over and take a peek. So if stuff isn't fully detailed, you'll know why. Plus they're drivers, not show cars. So let's go check out some of his rigs. He's got three of them here, a couple others in Wyoming or a few others in Wyoming. So we'll see what he has here. So here's the three cars that he has here, convenient. He does have another Studebaker back in the shed. Mark's here with me, my Uncle Mel. Well, let's take a peek at your cars, Mel. Oh, okay. All right. I think maybe we'll do the, uh, this one's called the Borg Badger. Uh, Mel's last name is Borg. Wanted to give it a name. Uh, this one started out as what? Uh, 1990 BMW 325i. Yeah, so an E30 BMW. Um, before Mel started this project, he was kind of asking us what would be a cool car that would handle well, drive well, and be reliable. And I said, maybe if you're going to do a custom body, do do a E30 BMW because they're cheap to get. They drive good, handle good. So what he did on this one was you shorten the back. 19 inches out of the back seat. And move so, the front subframe ahead 21 inches. Yeah, so stretch the front up here and then what you may not realize and what people didn't realize, we took it to one car show and people thought it was a kit car, but this is actually done by Mel, pounded out of sheet metal. What gauge did you use? 18 gauge. 18 gauge sheet metal. Um, flat sheets and he pounded all out. You made the uh, wood skeleton called what? I can never remember. Made a, it was a full wood buck. A full wood buck. Uh, Mel did make a um, book on this car. So I will also show some stuff from the book. And you'll be able to see kind of how it started. And how did you make that dash? Um, just pieces of wood. It's mainly yellow cedar and then some barbecued poplar. It's pretty awesome. Did did all the door panels, still some beamer interior. It was also a four door, so I so I stretched the door six inches and got a a two door glass. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty amazing. So all the stainless pieces that you see, Mel cut and bent up all of those. The bumper back here, he made all that. Everything on here is hand formed. The tail lights. Let's see if I can get another view here. The, uh, does one of you want to pop that door over there so we can see the LED lights? So Mel made all the interior as well. Got some cool LEDs in there. Or you can see the door panel a little bit better. So yeah, just a good mix between some original BMW stuff and other custom stuff. What's amazing is just to see the craftsmanship and how everything is formed. Did a cool idea here with the grill. Trying to figure out how to do a custom grill and decided that polishing some carriage bolts would be uh, the way to do it and it turned out super awesome so he formed all this grill which if anybody's formed metal that's that would be a lot of work 
stainless steel especially. Yeah, stainless steel especially, especially thick stuff too. It's not just thin chintzy stuff. It was one eighth. To finally get the shape I needed, I had to get the 10 pound sledgehammer out. It was either <laughs> that or give it up, and make it out of plastic. I'm glad you didn't give it up. Uh, how many hours do you think you have into it? Well, it, um, between two and three. Two and three thousand? Yep, yep. It was three years elapsed time, and I worked pretty steady on it. That's impressive. So what I think would look good, so these are the E30 wheels. What would be cool is if we could find some maybe wires like on the Jags from... Uh, what vintage it would it does this look 50s similar to 50s the 52 yeah jay so leno's blue one. jay leno's blue one yeah it's got definitely some cues from from jaguar what else did uh, inspired you Cabo Lago. oh i don't even know what that is that's um jay leno did a did a program on that i'll have to uh have to watch that. It was one from one of his, one of the museums. Well, let's have a look at the book that Mel made. So here it is, the Borg Badger. There's the front end of the car. There's another shot of it right before we took it to a show in Canby. It was the Cutsforth uh, cruise-in show that's pretty big here in town. So there you go. He wanted to build a car, but not the mechanicals. And there was one of his renderings that he drew. <laughs> one of the many. There was the donor car that he purchased, and there's the car finished. Kind of cool to see the difference side by side. Here you can see he lined up these pictures with the door handles lining up, so you can get a little bit of a feel. There you go, 19 inches out of the back seat, and the front subframe he extended 22 inches. Doing a little bit of chopping apart on it. Added six inches to the door, used glass from a two-door, two fitted hand cranks from an F-150. Yep, sounds easy, but I doubt it. I remember him talking about how much of a pain in the neck it was. Here's the wood buck. Some of the beginning stages of kind of fitting it on there, seeing what he liked. And I'm always just super amazed at just the talent that it takes to even make a wood buck for one of these. I wouldn't even know where to start. Keep on keeping on. Keep working on it till you get what you like. There you can see back fender. Got that pounded out. Another shot of the nose. Kind of see how that's laid out there. The pesky strut towers getting in the way up in that region. You can see the patches there for the door to show what that's going to be like for lengthwise. I gotta say, I love this picture. Of course, I'm biased because that's my son when he was probably, I'm guessing, around two, two years old, I think. Again, this was made out of 18 gauge cold rolled steel. 
Lots and lots and lots of pounding and beating and pounding and more beating and pounding. Here you can see it's really starting to take shape. Those headlight buckets. Now that's, I don't even know how you build those. That's kind of crazy. Have more talent than me, that's how you build those, I guess. Isn't that the truth? So cool. You can really start seeing it take shape here. Got the door kind of mocked up. Front end is welded together and starting to take shape. There's the grill he talked about. I can't even imagine. There we go. Eighth inch stainless steel. And he did beat that all out of stainless right there. Super impressive. A few more shots of the progress here. I remember when he had it in this stage in primer. I was completely blown away at how amazing it was turning out. More primer shots here. Lots of sanding. Finishing. Sorry if my phone distorts some of the angles here. It looks kind of squatted out and cambered out, but it's not really in real life. Then painting and sanding and more sanding. <laughs> Always sanding here. Buffing it out. Looks so good. There you can see it coming along with the door panel. The dash up there. Shot of the headliner here in the book. A couple more shots outside. Looks like Pete the cat gave his approval. Looking real good there. More shots of the interior door panel as it's coming closer and closer to completion. Super cool on the dash how he did the colors with the different woods and it's kind of hard to see here in the picture but it really has some nice contours to it. There it is. I just gotta say, Mel, that turned out so amazing. I can't even fathom the amount of work that went into that. Although I did get to see it in the different stages, I still just can't even believe how much work it took. Looks so cool. And we'll leave it at that. If you guys have any questions, comments, whatever, just leave them down below. And if I don't know the answer, I will ask Mel. Thanks again for watching these videos. Stay tuned for more of Mel's projects. More of our projects, whether it's side-by-sides, cars, dirt bikes, whatever it is. Stick around and we'll be sure to entertain you. If you like our video, like and subscribe.